What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. We haven't talked about the Power of the Force 2 line in a while, and a channel subscriber requested that I take a look at some recent prices. And I tried to find some unique items here. As you can see in the thumbnail, we've got the Showtime sticker on Darth Vader. We've got a signed Jeremy Bullock Boba Fett card. We've got a few prototypes and everything in between. So uh, before I dig in any further, I need to say thank you to my latest Patreon supporter, Ray Pullford. Thank you so much. I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name. I really appreciate the channel support. All my Patreon supporters get my videos 24 hours early access. Patreon.com slash action figure grader. And Ray, that graphic at the beginning of this video is not updated yet. I'm going to update it. Uh, starting with the videos tomorrow, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for becoming a Patreon supporter. Let's dig into some Power of the Force line of figures. These came out from 1995 until about 2000-ish, and we're going to start off with a red card Darth Vader, but this is the transition tray on the U.S. card, and what is that, you ask? Well, this is where Kenner slash Hasbro decided to switch over from the original lightsaber to a smaller lightsaber, and for a short time, they still used the inner tray that held the long saber. And they're not produced in big numbers because they were just going through some excess bubbles and trays that they had on in stock. And they tend to be heavily collected. I've got a number of them in my collection. I've sold off a couple here recently. But this Darth Vader on the U.S. card, this sold for a great price. It was an AFA 85, 85, 85, 90 were the subscores, and it sold for $51 plus $20 shipping. That is a great deal, a really great deal. And I would have been really tempted to buy it at that price. That's that's just a fantastic deal. The most expensive one for these short saber long tray transition trays is the U.S. card for the Luke uh, Farm Boy. That's the most expensive. There's also one for the Luke X-Wing, Luke Dagobah, uh, obviously the Darth Vader. There's only one or two or three examples of the Obi-Wan Kenobi that have that. Those are extremely rare and go for big money, $1,000 plus. Uh, I've, I've seen one in the Facebook Power of the Force 2 group, but uh, good luck finding one because I, I've, I think I've only seen one or two that, that exist. But anyway, this was a great deal. 51 bucks plus $20 shipping. This was another unique one where it was a Darth Vader that had an, an either an error or a running change where it had an oversized head. And you can see right here how small that normal head is versus this one, which was an oversized head. And uh, here it is, mint on card. Uh, not produced in big numbers. Again, this is kind of a, you know, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but lesser known variant. Uh, there's also a uh, retooled Shadows version of Darth Vader, which I do have in my collection. That was a JC Penny two pack pack in where they repackaged it on a single mint on card. That one's pretty desirable as well. That has kind of some retooling to the figure. But uh, this large head I, I had never heard of before. I've heard of Gray Head, uh, Power of the Force 2 Vaders, but this large head is, is apparently pretty desirable. And it was listed for $500, and the best offer that was accepted was $250. So, again, that was on the U.S. red card, one of the earlier examples. Next up was a Dave Prouse signed freeze frame action slide removable helmet Darth Vader. This is actually one I've got in my collection that's been authenticated by James Spence Authentication and then graded by CAS. Uh, very desirable to use these Power of the Force 2 figures for autographs because they're not particularly expensive usually just straight mint on card power of the force two figures so a lot of people like to use those at conventions and and things like that to have those signed dave prouse was a pretty uh prolific signer and so it's fairly easy to find one of these but uh, this one did sell for 124.99 this was not graded or authenticated by any means but uh, certainly looks legitimate his his autograph is is uh, usual you know it's, it's kind of the usual format and he often would switch the, uh, the the figures in his hand to kind of account for his writing style and to minimize damage to the cards because he knows that collectors or he knew that collectors <clears throat> like to keep them in mint condition so he would try to he would kind of curl his arm around when he signed it and that's why it's kind of signed at an angle there but uh, anyway $125 took that one home this one did have a light crease on the back of the card as you can see there uh, on the back of that photo uh, next up, we had another freeze frame action slide that's kind of hard to find, and that is the Sand Trooper. And this one sold for a great price, I thought, $26 plus $25 shipping. So let's call it about, you know, 
$51. Uh, that's a pretty good price for the Sand Trooper. This was not produced in big numbers. This is another one I've got AFA graded in my collection, but uh, certainly not as rare as some of the others that are out there, like Weequay, which we're going to go over in a second, and that's considered one of the grails. But uh, this is kind of a secondary, harder-to-find freeze-frame action slide, and that one sold for about $51. Uh, here was another example. This one sold for $66, uh, free shipping. So a couple of data points there for the Sand Trooper. One of the more desirable freeze frame action slides in the Power of the Force 2 line. Uh, and here is the Big Dog. This is one of the more expensive figures in the Power of the Force 2 line, especially as it relates to the freeze frame action slide series of Power of the Force 2 cardbacks. And that's the weak way. They were just not produced in big numbers. And as a result, supply and demand, these, these tend to be very, very expensive. The U.S. card is the most desirable, which is what you see here. There is also a trilingual Canadian card back that does go for big money, but not nearly as much as the U.S. card. Uh, but this one sold for $202.50 plus $25 shipping, and that's actually way down. Probably because Power of the Force 2 line is just not that heavily collected these days. But uh, back in the day, I mean, this was three or $400 all day long. I think I paid over $300 for mine that's graded AFA 85+. plus. So they haven't exactly moved that much, although this one is, you know, ungraded, obviously. But uh, it looked to be in pretty good shape overall, probably like 85 condition. Uh, but that is one of the more expensive uh, items in the Power of the Force 2 line is the freeze frame action slide version of Weequay. There is like a, a normal green card. Uh, with like a foil label, things like that. Those are not very expensive. You can pick those up for 5 to $10. It's just this specific card back with the freeze frame action slide on the U.S. card or the Canadian card. Both of those are fairly expensive. Uh, here was another one that sold. This one sold over in England for 175 pounds or about $200 plus about $40 shipping, at least over here to the U.S. So again, you know, it, it just shows you that the an ungraded U.S. card for the freeze frame action slide week way tends to go for about 200 bucks these days, give or take, with shipping costs. Uh, next up was an AFA 80 plus Boba Fett, and this has the half circles variant. We've talked about this in past videos, but uh, the Boba Fett figure had a number of different errors and changes, and this one has half circles on his hands instead of the full circles, which is much more readily available. There's also ones with, without the chest emblem that you see here, or without the shoulder emblems. Uh, so lots of different variations for Boba Fett and pretty heavily collected. Uh, this was on uh, the U.S. card back, and again, it was graded 80 plus, and it does denote half circles on the AFA label. That one sold for $77 plus $12.05 shipping. That was a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good buy right there. Uh, typically, like an 85 or 90 grade, you can spend 100 to $150 pretty easily. So I think that was fair given the 80 plus grade. Next up was just a Collection 3 green card. Uh, with the photo of Boba Fett, the larger photo. Uh, this one had this full circles on his hand. So this is a, a fairly common version of Boba Fett on these Power of the Force 2 cards. Again, it was graded AFA 80, 80, 80, 90 were the subscores. And uh, that one sold for 99 99 plus 1205 shipping. Uh, next up, this is a very desirable one. That's the U.S. freeze frame action slide for Boba Fett. Again, there's also a, a Canadian version that's a little bit more expensive, but... Uh, the freeze frame action slide in very high grade, like if it's graded by AFA, can command $150 or more. This one was ungraded and it sold for about 50 bucks. That was a great buy just given the condition. It looked to be in really good condition overall. Again, this one had the full circles. Uh, a little bit of card curl, things like that, but uh, overall a, a pretty good price on a, a very desirable one. The freeze frame action slide Boba Fett, the ATST driver, uh, the uh, the Sand Trooper and, of course, the Weequay are, are four of the more desirable freeze frame action slides that you can pick up. Uh, next up was a loose graded one. This is something you don't see very often, but it was a loose graded Power of the Force 2 Stormtrooper graded uncirculated 90. And uh, this one had kind of the newer case style from UKG. And that one sold for 41 pounds plus about $17 shipping. So that's a pretty good deal for, you know, if you're into kind of loose graded Power of the Force 2. Not many people are, but... Uh, it's not very often that these come up for sale. So uh, I guess just someone wanted to add one if they were a Stormtrooper Focus Collector. Uh, next up, we've got a few boxed items. This is the Rancor uh, with Luke Skywalker inside. That one sold for $127.50 plus $12.75 shipping. And that's kind of been about the going rate. I found a couple of other data points between $125 and about $160 U.S. dollars. For those of you that were sad that we missed out on the Black Series HasLab Rancor, this is another good option for you, and uh, it looks awfully cool inside that box. 
Next up is the AT-80 Walker, and this is mint and seal box for the Power of the Force 2 line. That's packed in with General Veers as well as the AT-80 driver. And that one sold for $177.50 plus $24.70 shipping. Uh, next up, this is actually an interesting one. This is the hologram red card for the Stormtrooper. And not many red cards had the hologram. The most common ones were the Stormtrooper, Princess Leia, and R2-D2. But very select other characters can be found with the hologram. And uh, it, they just don't come up very often. you got to be careful because there are unscrupulous eBay sellers that will peel off the hologram off of a green card and put it onto a red card and say it's factory legit. I, I, I tried to buy a Boba Fett one time that had a red card with the hologram, and it turned out to be a fake, unfortunately, after I got it looked at by one of the experts within the Power of the Force 2 Facebook group. But, uh, you know, I, 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 that same gentleman, Scott S., who is probably the, the foremost expert on Power of the Force 2 figures, he has a number of other characters like Greedo and a few others on this red card with the hologram. So if you have a legitimate red card uh, with a hologram sticker on it, those are very hard to find. But the Stormtrooper is actually pretty easy to find. Again, Stormtrooper, R2-D2, Princess Leia, those are the three most common, but there are some, ex uh, some exceptions. Anyway, this one was graded AFA 85, and it was listed for $249.99, and it sold for $170. So even the common red cards with the hologram that have been authenticated as legitimate and not fakes, they can command big money. So uh, just an interesting data point there. Next up is another desirable variant, and that's Luke Jedi with the brown vest. The, the black vest is not that desirable. That's pretty common. But this red card with that brown vest color is a harder-to-find variant. And uh, this one was graded. It was graded AFA 80, and you can see where it's labeled on the AFA label, brown vest and dented rings on hilt. 80, 80, 90 were the subscores. It was listed for $275, and the best offer that was accepted was $170. So, uh, again, that's a pretty desirable variant that's tough to find in high grade. Uh, next up is the Tatooine Skiff, and I wanted to show this because on Hakes right now at auction is a prototype sample of this item. It's an unpainted Tatooine Skiff along with an unpainted first shot prototype Luke Jedi that has been authenticated and graded by AFA. I expect that to go for big money. I mean, I'm guessing it's going to be over a thousand bucks. But if you want just the retail version, this is the Minton Seal Box Tatooine Skiff with Luke. That one sold for 50 bucks plus $14 shipping, but I'm sure I'll cover in a uh, Hakes auction update video as to what the final sales price was on that prototype skiff with Luke that uh, is for sale right now at auction on, on Hakes as part of lot 236 that ends in November. Uh, next up, these Showtime sticker green card Power of the Force 2 figures are also very desirable. These, I believe, were only given out to Showtime employees as uh, part of some promotion. And a number of different characters have them. And I'm going to show you some examples that sold for big money in a second. But this is just for the Vader, and that sold for $300. So that just shows you how hard these are to find and what people are willing to pay for these Showtime stickers. They just don't come up very often because they were produced in very, very limited number. I believe they were only for Showtime employees. And on that note, check out this lot. This is a lot of AFA-graded Showtime stickers. It's got Nian Num graded AFA 85, the Emperor graded 85, Han Solo Endor, graded AFA 80. Uh, the Hoff Stormtrooper, graded 90. Luke Yavin Ceremony, graded 90. The Emperor's Royal Guard, graded 80. Uh, another Darth Vader that's graded 90. Princess Leia Slave Outfit, graded 85. And then Boba Fett, which is one of the more desirable ones, also graded 85. And this lot was for all of them together. So very, very tough to put this set together. And they sold for $4,000. Four thousand U.S. dollars. I did verify that on 130point.com that that was the sales price. So that just shows you how expensive those Showtime sticker Power of the Force two figures are. Uh, next up, we've got Grand Admiral Thrawn. This is one that I sold off recently to a Patreon supporter. Mine was graded AFA 9.0 on the modern scale. This one was graded a yellowed 85 plus. 85, 90, 90. That one sold for $150. And I sold my clear blister one that was graded AFA 9.0 for less than this. So congratulations to the buyer on that because I think he got a great deal on that. But this was a yellow bubble and AFA 85 plus. And again, that sold for $150 for Grand Admiral Thrawn on the Expanded Universe Power of the Force 2 card back. Uh, next up, we've got that Jeremy Bullock autographed Power of the Force 2 green card. 
and that one was graded 85 and the signature was verified by JSA as shown here on the CAS label. That one was listed for 500 US dollars and the best offer that was accepted was $350 free shipping. So again, you know, these Power of the Force 2 card backs are very popular for getting autographs and uh, you can send these in to CAS to have them to have the signature authenticated by JSA, James Spence authentication that costs about $35 and then you got to pay extra to actually have the the mint on card item graded. Uh, that's another $60 or so. So it's not cheap to do. It costs about $95 plus shipping to and from CAS. And that's the letter of authenticity that comes with every single item you, you send in to CAS for this service. But a uh, really nice example there. And again, that sold for $350. Next up, we've got a freeze frame Death Star droid. I believe this was a fan club exclusive mail away. Uh, this was graded AFA 80. That one sold for $46 plus $12 shipping. So that's kind of another desirable freeze frame. That and that, I believe the AT-AT driver were, were mail away promotions. So um, just another data point there. And then we're going to end this with a couple of Power of the Force 2 prototypes. And the first one is a Hoth Chewbacca. Uh, this one had date stamps, but it was unpainted with lots of wacky plastic colors. It did have the date stamps on the bottom of the feet. Kenner China, 1998. And I've got a number of different Power of the Force 2 prototypes in my collection. I really like collecting these. That is a really ugly Chewbacca, but the reason he's ugly is because he's, he's supposed to be covered in snow. The final retail figure had uh, white paint apps and kind of white snow clumps on him, so that's why it looks that way. Uh, but anyway, it also included the weapon in a non-production color, so very desirable figure. That one was listed for $350, and the best offer that was accepted was $300. And then that same seller also had an unpainted Pote Snitkin, who is a uh, Jabba's henchman, a sail barge, or, you know, skiff, skiff master kind of uh, henchman. This one was an unpainted prototype with unpainted first shot prototype weapons. That one also sold for $300, best offer accepted. So, and that's about the going rate for prototypes. That's about what I usually pay, to, anywhere from $250 to about $350, depending on what kind of wacky colors are included, uh, whether it's complete with the accessories, whether it has the, has the date stamps or not. All those kind of things can affect the price. That's all I really had for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.